Sebastian. Okay. So in this, I uh, could be MXF. Mm-hmm. 
movie. Maybe I like this. Again, under the MXF, you will have uh, year 2021, 2020, like this. Under this, you will have the different uh, folders uh, with, uh, with respect to every day. Right? Whenever you ingest and clean, it registers in the database along with an OMN ID. Okay, so this will... <coughs> Suppose I ingest a clip named as ABC, right? Today I will ingest it. So what the, uh, the delivery manager does is, it will monitor that and it, it says, okay, abc.mxf file came in. It has to import it and ITS doesn't do any conversion. Whatever the file comes in, it will play it as it is. It doesn't do any conversion. Okay? Uh, that, that is a media conversion. So, what? <coughs> it finds this file and imports it into uh, database. So, while importing into the database, it, it re renames that file. So, how it renames is abc underscore omn omn is for the omnibus. Where uh, original name, right? Then uh, it's a name, uh, 2021, then uh, date, month and date. So it will be 0209 uh, and it is, then it will have a uh, hours, minutes, seconds information. So if you uh, put it at 09, 9am, 900, dot So this file will be stored in this uh, folder under media mxf 2021 uh, 09 underscore 2 under, and under this folder uh, it will be in one more folder uh, under this folder this file will be stored okay. when it is doing this uh, the registration it also does some background quality check. It is called analysis, FPK analysis. Basically, now the ITX uses the GV engine as a engine. Earlier, it used to have the older version is called as uh, Pandora, Pandora engine. Like the, like you have VLC, then a quick time player. Similarly, uh, ITX uses GV engine, the player called as GV engine. So that does some kind of analysis, whether that, what kind of uh, file it is, uh, what, what is the compression rate, what is the bit rate, what is the duration, how many audio tracks, how many video tracks, what is the time code, that all is done by the GV engine FTP analyzer, okay. FTP uh, analyzer. So that reports are also stored in this folder along with this MXF. Right. So this is how the uh, information comes into the database. Engine only analysis or it mm -hmm. makes a report that uh, whether the mm -hmm. video mm -hmm. can play or mm -hmm. can, mm -hmm. cannot be played? It, it just gives a report. Just only report. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If there is any problem with the file, it, it won't get imported. It will be straight away rejected. If any file is rejected, can I see where is it okay or successful or rejected? Yeah. In the media folder, you have a rejected document. Where you can see that? It will store in, on that folder yes. or automatically remove after 7 days or 10 days? No, it will be there in that folder. It has to be done manually. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, and about the architecture, it is a flat network uh, for the ITX. Yes, uh, you have the network. Maybe this is your uh, uh, switch.
not sure what. The first one. Every one then. something else it, it won't be imported and still it, it, it will keep on remain though. it will not transcode it, it won't transcode it won't be picked up for the conversion also right so it, it will remain there so those those things have to be manually managed or removed at a certain date right. also in the in box also it will be just for the incoming uh, uh, watch folder okay, so if you put anything <coughs> Uh, which is not supported by the ITH, it, it, it will remain there only. So they have to be removed manually. Yes. And in the, uh, this one, the, inside the inbox, uh, we have two more folders, something called as logo. Logos and uh, uh, my one more folder. So this is a, actually a channel name. Somo is a channel name. So in case when we integrate with the uh, <coughs> traffic system which can generate the schedule, schedule should be put in this uh, folder, the XM, IT XML schedule. And it gets imported into the database and we can directly load that schedule onto the uh, channel. So, uh, we now, now only uh, the, all our inputs are coming on the, uh, from the XRE watch folder. Okay? Uh, if you put anything directly onto the, uh, this one, the delivery money wa uh, manager watch folder, they, they also get imported into the ITX if it is a broadcast standard file. So we are copying file to the XRE and XRE converted it to the standard format. So delivery manager it's sending to the database. So previously the file was go to the ITX main and backup. So here also, yeah. Once the file says suppose now what I told you the EDC file. Uh, you imported and it is registered with the database and also it is stored in the physical file in the media folder or in the storage. When you schedule this ABC on the schedule, right, uh, you schedule ABC, XYZ. Okay. This is the schedule, you put it onto the schedule. So this will first check with the database whether this file is available in the database or not. Right? 
So if it says yes, it is available in the database. Uh, basically, this is a, a service of the output server. On the, in the output server, there are different services. Uh, service called as TX Play output service, media cache service. Okay, so the TX Play service uh, will detect this. It, it reads the schedule, and if it uh, sends that information to uh, database. That whether ITX database, whether this file is available in the database or not. If it says yes, then it sends a request to output server, stating, okay, that, uh, there is, I got a one schedule with this APC file name, and this is available in the uh, central storage. Sentence. You get it. Then, then the output server again uh, re uh, dire redirects it to media cache service. A media cache service, it, it gets the, this file from the central storage, the central store, directly to OK1, OK1M and OK1 backup. Okay, on this, if we have a X drive, cache drive, on both output servers. So under the cache service, this file will be put. So once that comes in the cache folder, the status of the output becomes green. Okay. So that green means uh, it is already cached and it is able to play. If, if it's not green, then it will not play? Uh, not it, it depends on the criteria, what, what criteria. Because is. previously we experienced uh, the file size is big. Mm. So it uh, already we got the playlist mm -hmm. uh, and we put it and uh, already playing, but it's directly play from the Correct. storage server Correct. and it's yeah. get like buffering or Correct. Same same case here. Same, case here. Yes, same case here also. So you have uh, <coughs> four three four status on the uh, schedule. That is one is red. Right. This is not ready. database also. This file, if it is read, it is not the state, this is not available in the database also. Right, then you have something called as yellow. Right, so this is uh, the data in the, this file is available in the database, okay, but not yet cached. and store not at all. Okay. Because when, when you put a schedule of say 100 items, uh, the ITX uh, will check each and every clip in a sequence manner. Okay. And in it, in it, it says ready, ready, ready. So once it is ready, it, it turns into yellow, then it starts caching it. To a local folder. Right. So then it turns orange. Okay. When it is orange, it means it is caching. Okay. It is caching to local drive of the output server could be main and backup also. Once this is cached completely, then we have a green setter. Right? This is cached and ready. Okay. Maybe uh, intermittently uh, when you are using the uh, secondary recording, right? Now there is a secondary recording option. What secondary recording does is, whatever the live you, you are playing, that can be recorded directly onto the ITX. Okay, so when you retrieve it back or when, when that file is still recording, you can reschedule it for the next playback, repeat news kind of thing, right? So when you reschedule, when it is still, uh, live is going on, it is recording, and you put it directly into the 
schedule back into the schedule. Then it, it shows something else. Uh, here it is red plus inside it is shows a R. That means it is still recording. Then once it, it is recording, then it, it goes into something called as uh, blue color. So this blue color indicates uh, this item is the item is in the database, but physical location is not on the store, ITX store. It is somewhere else. Somewhere else in the sense, usually it is in the in case of the um, archive systems, like you, uh, the ITX can integrate with the archive system like Diva, Mastec, those kind of archive systems. Then it can locate into the Diva location also. Then it can fetch that. Similarly, when you are doing a recording and immediately you schedule that, it, first it will, will not find the item, physical item. So it turns into blue, then into red recording. Then it caches again, orange, then it becomes green. That is for the uh, live recording. So, <coughs> then uh, usually the, um, in case of the ITX framework server, we will go there now. Usually ITX framework server can be usually in a main backup mode. If you have uh, redundancy, right, it, there will be main framework server and a backup framework server. In fact, there is no main and backup, both will be active depending on the service. Uh, it can be either primary or a backup. So, <coughs> what happens usually is uh, you have the framework server 1 and you have the framework server 2. Okay? On both servers, you will have a SQL installed <coughs> and SQL installed, the database is installed. So, there when we use this in this manner, it's a mirrored mode. Okay, that is called as a SQL mirroring mode. Then uh, we use some one more server called as witness. Okay, this will monitor these two SQL databases. It just monitors the SQL database, and if this is primary. It keeps on mirroring to this information, and once this fails, if there is any problem with this server, SQL or the framework server, then this witness server automatically promotes this and makes this as a primary database. So that is the advantage of having two framework servers. You don't have framework, right? Yeah, we don't have only one framework server. So everything runs on this framework server. So this is the SQL uh, main and backup with a witness instance. Uh, th this is the architecture of the, this SQL architecture is by the Microsoft itself. It is not the Graswellly design. The SQL mirroring is done by the Microsoft. We use that technology. Right? Okay, then, then we have the different, uh, when, when it comes to the ITS uh, framework server, there are different server services to make the whole system workable. Right? So, what are those services? We will go directly into the uh, database, sorry, the framework server and see each of the service and what is the use of that service. <coughs> okay. And uh, in case of these like we have two framework servers, then the, those services can also run in a resilience mode. Resilience in the sense? Resilience means main and backup mode. Whether it is main backup mode or whether it is a load, load balance mode or a single instance mode. So there are three different modes. Main backup resilience is, it can run in a main mode or a backup mode. If it is load balanced, means it can run on multiple hardware, multiple devices. If it is single instance, means on one service server it is running, 
But on the other server, it is a cold standby. We need to keep it stopped. And whenever it is required, we have to manually bring it up or start the service. That is three different uh, modes. So one is uh, main backup. <laughs> so when the services are in main backup mode, so it can either promote it or demote it. Then we have load balance. In case of main backup, uh, it could be either in promoted mode or a demoted mode. Promoted in the sense it is active service, demoted means it is not active. So, under this, uh, there are multiple servers which comes into this. Something like that. I call with the time service, blocking service. These are some different time, types of services which we use it in a main backup mode. Okay, then in case of load balance, it is a system service, uh, focus service, then uh, locator service. These are the different, uh, some of the services which run in load balance mode. Means this, they, they can run on multiple uh, servers and more than two also. Whereas these can run only on two servers, either main or backup server. This can run more than two servers. Because in, in, when the ITX, uh, when we take say two framework servers, we can go up to, I think, around 15 channels. So once we have one framework server, we can add 15 channels. When that number of channels increases, then we need to add more uh, framework servers to do this system service, locator service as a load balance. Load because balance. there is an extra load coming into the service. Then these services need to be installed more instances. Okay, then under the uh, single instance uh, comes the media watcher. Then one more is uh, missing media. So uh, these are the different types, but now. Since you have only single framework server, uh, there is not, nothing like that. So it's always either promoted, load balance, single instance, everything in a single, single framework server. This is for the information since in case tomorrow we add one more framework server, this will be useful. Okay, in case of a single instance, uh, this media watcher will be running on, we, we install it on both the framework servers maybe on multiple framework servers, but keep it stopped on a other server and running on only one server. In case any hardware failure happened or some, uh, that under maintenance it is shut down, this services will start on the other service manually. Manually we will run those 
services. Overall, all these services are automatically load balanced. We don't have to uh, run any push. So, uh, we will see the services on the uh, framework server. Can you see the monitor here? Yeah. Right? Here. 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 So in this framework server, we have so many services running, right? So the main is the server controller, okay? So this server controller uh, controls all the services. other services. And it, it, it's like a watchdog also. So any service goes down, it will automatically bring it back. Okay. And when we want to close the other services, all services, then we just have to close the server controller. So whenever we run the, the service, we need to check two points. One is its status. What is the status? It will be green. And another one is the clock. So this clock has to be in a black mode on all the services. Uh, even on the uh, uh, framework servers and on the output server. Also. It has to be in black color. If it is in blue color or in a red color, that means it's not locking to the ITX clock or so it is locking to its local time or it is not coming. If it is blue, it is locking to local time. If it is red, then that it's not able to communicate with the service. Day before yesterday that it was red, then it was blue. Now I'm showing it's there is error in the all your other services. This server control, we have the system service. Okay, so this system service internally manages three different different services. One is, it is uh, the authentication service, means this authenticates the user name and password with the domain controller. Right, the ITX admin, what we use, uh, then authentication with the uh, database services. It also manages the licenses. Okay, whatever the license we put into the system, it manages those licenses. So we can see the uh, licensing here. Uh, don't worry if there is no site license available because this this license is on the framework server only, and we don't have any service uh, license running on the framework server. Uh, in case something like uh, the missing material or some other uh, uh, maybe the proxy generation. Or, uh, the uh, open center paint. There are some services uh, which require the license on the framework server itself. Then, in that case, we can install the license ID here, dongle, then it shows it. Otherwise, if we want to see the licenses of the other uh, servers, we have to go here, license feature detail, and press a refresh button. Right? So, here it gives me all the license details. The output 1D, what is the license dongle ID, and when the license is expired. If there is no expiry date, means it's a permanent license. And these are the, uh, what we call it as a options, or the features which are enabled on that output support. If from where the license comes, from where you put that one? Uh, that that you can put it in the inbox. Okay. And when you receive the license file, you can put it in the inbox. Okay. And inbox from the inbox, how will you go that this is for FS1 or output 1 or output so The license is depending on the ID, this ID. Right? Okay. So the license file also will have this ID. Okay. 
this idea is not matching, then it, will, it may import it, but it, it won't be active. So this is about the system service. <coughs> uh, we can also check the partner services. In case if, the, if it is running on a main backup or multiple uh, devices, then we can see the partner service. It will show the IP address of on the IP address of the other servers where this service is running. And we can run some diagnostic text and it will show what, what are the diagnostic reports. If any server I saw, if any server showing any authentication error, then uh, what I need to do? Authentication case. service. Uh, a particular one, one client or one server is showing is not. Uh, uh, that client has to be registered with the domain. It has to be connected with the domain. Then usually when you hover the your mouse on the network, it shows so my team, so my dot team. Mm. This is the domain network. If it shows unknown or a public or a private and it is not registered with a domain controller. Right. So we need to restart some, maybe the NLA service, there is a service called as NLA, Network uh, Location Awareness, and uh, DHCP client or DNS client, and uh, this will connect to the domain. Okay. So that, that communication leads to the authentication error. Then we have uh, the service. Uh, this service basically does the analysis. Whenever we import something, it does some analysis work on that. How many, what is the uh, video format, what is the duration, how many audio tracks, how many video tracks. That is done by this uh, FTP analysis. We have, uh, I am running two jobs like that. So it can do parallelly two uh, analysis methods. And uh, this software updater we are not using it for the development team. Then we have media processing job. This is also the same like uh, the one we see in the FTP. This is the same FTP job. The all other services, uh, they are require the license. So they are saving. What right. to show this today? If it's a license process, we need to go for that. Service. This is basically uh, there are different logins, uh, trace logs happening. So this uh, service will monitor that login. Who's logging? Logs. Log. Log. Okay. Log. Okay. Log. 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 Okay, so IPX can read the time from two different sources. One is BIT, BIT is that, and then another is the NTP. Okay, so uh, Admir, I think you used to have the BITC card and the uh, BITC signal on the Prima server, and it converts that BITC signal into on the TCP network and distribute it among the IPX services. Now uh, we have got the NTP server. Now it's a more stable, uh, so no more VITC cards are being used, uh, NTP is being used. So we have a, uh, using the 
Controls or uh, monitoring purpose. So this is mo- this is the monitoring purpose. Okay, this, this monitors the sub service, and that service directly communicates with the respective service. Like, uh, let's say we have the NV nine thousand router. Right. So that NV nine thousand router control service will communicate with the NV nine thousand controller. I have something like HCO, 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 H
So all those services are clubbed together in this LDS, Router Data Service, and it monitors every single uh, uh, matrix or uh, source and destination. If the NV controller is not working, yet, in that case, can we change from a other matrix to direct other matrix? Yes, hardware matrix. We need to change from here. Uh, that depends on where, where you want to change it. Let's uh, say uh, the live source is not working. That is, that is, you need to change it in the live source itself, live event. Live event itself. That you need to change it to hardware. Then uh, we have as and service. So the as and service uh, is responsible to generate the as and as and when the playback happens, okay, there will be as runs generated. So this will this service will generate that as and report. Okay. So this is stored on the C drive of the framework support. So on C drive, then in as run, so my is the channel. The marketing the log to one to do one another two channels. As run log. Yes. So under this, we have day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to thirty one. So every thirty days, thirty one days, it gets refreshed. Or it is it will be overwritten. Okay, now uh, these are the text format. Uh, nowadays we have the XML format also. In the XML format we will get more information about the uh, so how can I get the XML format? You just have to double click here and you can Currently we are using taking the text format. We have on develop software. We pull it and convert it to text net. So if we directly you can get the XML. You can try this You can map those fields, metadata fields and you can get that. This will have more information than the uh, GHT file, like right? uh, in point out, point times, then uh, video format, audio format, how many audio tracks, so many information in the other Too many more. This is generated every day. One folder under that XML. If it's one of them. Oh, everything is the question. Now, this is a database service. Basically, the database service is used to monitor and execute the database tasks. So, we have the SQL database. We should do some tasks regularly. That tasks are executed by this database. Okay, we are not running the task directly on the uh, SQL. It okay, means uh, we are not creating the maintenance plan on the SQL server. The SQL server or the SQL uh, uh, tools. We are doing it on the uh, database. This, this uh, runs a script in the background and does the database. This is now. शाहद ब्लेट फोन देना, शाहद ने वाला फोन दिया था सीपीयू डालना स्टेज में डालना। इसमें मिक्स्ड अप लोड बैलेंस, इसमें टाइम सर्विसेज monitor the database, you can monitor, this monitors the database also. And it shows whether it is primary and status whether it is okay or not. If there is something problem with the database and all, then we can check the status of the database in this database service and monitor the database. If I want to add something, say, if I want to configure another one, just for us. We need to stop the service then and or there is another service called the database configuration service. Database service configuration. 
So this is a full backup of the database runs every day. Okay. So I am taking a database every day at uh, say 2 a.m. Scheduled at 2 a.m. And it, it executes every uh, day. Uh, if we want we can add more number of instances also. Like uh, you can add uh, every 12 hour, every 6 hour, yeah. like that. And uh, backup the transaction log is every 15 minutes. Yeah. This is executed every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes. Uh, it also executed now. So every 15 minutes there was database transaction log. It is shared. It is, these are all shared. Optimized indexes, it is every one hour. So indexing, the database indexing is required. So searching, otherwise it will be larger, larger. So every uh, hour that indexing is done. Then backup system database backup. System database backup actually not required. We are not using the system database also. We are just keeping the backup only. So it is not used at all. There is no system. So now the database is just new. No, not that much data is inside. After one or one and a half years, data will increase. That is the last number of one years. After 15 minutes of it scheduled to backup, while it's backup, mm. uh, is there any kind of slower? Yes, yes, yes. During the backup and during the indexing, uh, the database performance is reduced. It is reduced. We should make the time at uh, night. Night. This database, this indexing is every hour. Okay. When the database is going bigger, in that case, uh, that in case on the indexing, we, that, that depends on the database uh, health also. If there are more fragments, then it's a problem. Usually that fragments happen if you keep more number of schedules. Schedules should be deleted on a regular basis. You should not keep more schedules, more, maybe more than not, not more than uh, 15 days or 30 days. All the schedules must be deleted. All your schedules will be listed here. Whatever schedule you create and store it. Then you can just uh, select the one uh, the maybe sample schedule. Don't uh, delete the algorithm schedules. Algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. Especially this algorithm. This is the algorithm uh, schedule. So that's a reg uh, running schedule. Okay. That should not be. So you can select this and delete the algorithm to that service or that XML gets yeah. Is this possible to make this uh, service for limited users? Only, only specific people can do the schedule, not everyone. Is this possible? So there might be, a, there might be an accident to the issue. This is about the uh, database backup service, the or the database service. Then uh, we have the locator service. So the locator service is a load balance one. Okay. Locator service is one uh, which is a gateway to the uh, ITX service. Okay. Like locator service has got the information of all other services running in the ITX system. So, there can be multiple systems, multiple servers located at different places. So this is the XYZ in the last one. So that is... If I find there is uh, some problem, yes. say failure yes. or something, yes. then uh, yes. we, we need to check what is the reason. There will be a log service that logs in the new guy. Test logs. Database service log. So every day uh, there is a log happening. 
right? You need to check the logs for this such error. See that there should there is no failure. If no failure, then it's all all good. If there is a failure, definitely we need to put why it is why there. Where is the part? Zero. 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 This locator service uh, can run on multiple uh, servers also. That is that why it's a load balancer. So whenever any ITX systems comes into uh, the network, uh, when they start this server controller, maybe the output server or you start the desktop client, first it comes to the locator service. Mm -hmm. Okay, then locator service has got the list of services running. Like okay, system service is running on this 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 IP. Open service is running on this this IP. Time service is promoted on this server or this IP. Like that, it will have all the information. Then it will redirect those clients and services to that respective uh, machines, okay, and it gives that information. Okay, this is the IP and of the port or the server. Uh, this is the port number, and this is the health of that. So that is the. Uh, locator service. So this is a gateway to the all other services. services. This is stopped. Then the, whenever we start the service, we will not get the connectivity to any of the service. So, so for here, uh, all service will be automated added here, or it is is there any option to manually add? In the <coughs> sense. In service, yeah. service. Uh, these are all manually added. Whenever we start, this is the computer name, right? FS1, OP1, and OP1B. And this is the different service name database service, server controller, server controller, server controller, desktop application. When you start desktop application on the other machine, then also this comes here and it shows the. So, service added procedure says? Yes, it, it will automatically come and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Server controller control the all services of uh, the IT that service. Particular and main. locator service control the inside of I ITX all services. So main thing is this has to be running when we start the server controller. That time only the locator service will come up. Okay. If once once that locator service comes up, comes up. again it will detect the which are all services are running and it takes over the path. Even when we start the desktop client application, first we need to see these three yes. uh, images, right? So, and the clock will be white color. That means the LED is all changing. First uh, LED indicates the locator service, second is system service, third is the logging service. Logging service. First one. First one locator service. Second one system service. That one, login service. Login service. Login service. If you hover mouse on the time, then it shows the which IP where the time service is running. 90.3 is the frame of service. We have main backup, then whichever gets promoted, then it shows that IP. Okay, so this is about the locator. Then uh, delivery manager. <coughs>
can code. Ensure is not working like that. So uh, we are using uh, ingesting port, two port. Mm -hmm. So if we put directly our PCR one and PCR two mm -hmm. on the live port, the direct physically. Mm -hmm. So can I switch between here? No. Physically only one input. Of that. One input. So, no. Whatever input you give, that will get recorded. That will get to be live. So physical input is what? Is the NB nine thousand or no? No, this is just physical input on the output server. Output server. So only single single input. Okay, no problem. We can manage also. We have created this. We can add some more input output. This is a text file where we enter this information and it is based. IT matrix server. This is basically used for the IT routing. Right now we don't have any IT source. Okay, so then we can. So where I can tell? This is we need to manually add the routing. Okay, okay. If I arrange, ah, you just send the router. So how can I configure? Here, here, here. Level. Level. If we get IT router, then also we can add it. Because the IT X now can take IP inputs and give a SDI router. In case this order fails, then this one. If this one fails, then it has got a bypass router. So 
this this goes into a bypass mode. So what, whichever is routed during that time, either this or this, that will be fixed. So still you will have a output. Okay. So coming to the all service, all service instead of running, so only service it to service yes. That is, the, is it as a running as a service within the uh, IP address? That these are within or that to without? Within the ITX, again it will uh, turn it as a service or no service. But for us, it is all service only. Like we are running this time service, right? so this is our for the ITX, inter uh, for this framework server, uh, it, it is not a service. So like that, uh, uh, for us, uh, the main uh, status should be running. Manually server So, this is about the output framework uh, server. Similarly, we have the output server. Output server. Output server. There are only three services. Output service also has got explay. Explay is the one which will do the graphics playback. It controls the vertigo graphics. So I can directly press and load the output one. I can load any graphics. Manually we can control it or it does the automatic control from the schedule. TX play is the one which will monitor the schedule and has the control over the schedule. Whatever the commands we will take, pass, hold, it all monitors by the schedule. That's called no license. Schedule now. Blank. In your low status. Because there is no license. Schedule. Schedule is blank. Okay. Schedule is blank. You want to put this term, say no, if it is schedule is less than 30 minutes, or schedule has got any missing item. And also this will be yellow. Seven, so there is some warning. Although it doesn't mean it is completely down. It is a warning. Output server. This is the output server. It will convert the file, that MXF file or MOE file into SDI file. And it reads and it plays that as a SDI output. Also this does the a rendering process, like uh, the, whatever the graphics is there, <coughs> graphics is rendered uh, by the uh, in the background by graphics card, and it, it does an overlay and plays it as a one layer SDI layer by this by, by this output support. This also has got the configuration like I can define my resolution whether it is high definition, standard definition, 4K and all. This is the right now Then we have the audio number of audio tracks, how many audio tracks we want that we can configure. We can also configure the audio rules. Suppose now I am playing only one audio track. Usually you have only one one pair, right? No multiple pair. You yeah, have only one pair or how many? Only one pair. So uh, if you had multiple pairs, then you can add those pairs. So also. I can also like English version, Bengal version. Okay. You can add those different versions. And then I can have a two sixty-four uh, tracks. Okay. And I can have these so Nano, Stereo, Dolby. That information you can configure. So then, uh, uh, 
there is an uh, SMTP of the IP output of that. Okay. You can configure it here. Then you can configure the codec, what codec I want it. Like whether, what is the bit rate? Uh, what is my uh, compression type? What is the chroma type? That information you can configure. Okay, this total destination. Uh, <coughs> it's only at yeah, you can have UDP access. I think the network the multicast is blocked. So that's why it's not doing the multicast. So I'm pointing to 45 UDP. This is the multiple UDP. Put it into UDP, then it should do. Then uh, I, I can send in interface also, like uh, ITX has got two uh, NIC ports. Okay. One NIC port I can use it for the regular communication and another NIC port I can use it for sending this uh, API. Okay. That is possible. Okay. Which one is for scheduling and which one is for output? Uh, how he explained this is the uh, is for scheduling R&D purpose. Okay. This is output for the monitor. No, monitor. Normally, if I stop this service, that is the scheduling. This is from the main, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I start this, it will start with the color bar, then it will be. Then we can purge. It's a manual purge. 
So one, when we do a purge, it will retain the uh, assets only which are there in the schedule yes. and delete everything else. Schedule. Only schedule. Only schedule, which is currently scheduled. Okay. Schedule is not a Now I do purge. No, when we will be deleted from the main schedule. Yes. Then it will be also yes, it will be deleted from there. When you delete an asset from the asset you are here. If I park right now, so it, uh, will it affect any running schedule or no? Like if, 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 if I park right now? Right, right now, if you park, everything will be deleted because there is no schedule. Right. No schedule. Okay. So it will retain the objects which are scheduled. Rest all it will delete. It okay. will not affect on the schedule. It will delete the file or? Yeah, it will delete no matter. It will delete the file. It will delete only on that output server. Okay, the output server. Okay. And, and that means mm -hmm. this is main, right? It is delete only on main. That's still Okay. Or if I file delete okay. from the uh, like engineering panel. From here, if you. So, delete. Uh, this is the manual. Uh, you delete from this one. Then also. Also, delete from here. Output. Yeah. So, where is this? Same process. I have a question. Uh, if uh, I purge cash mm -hmm. on live source, what will uh, be the effect on uh, display or video? For live source, there is no asset. Yeah. It is not deleted. It won't get deleted. If uh, either it on scheduled, there will be no even, effect. Even if it is scheduled, live source is not profile now. Only the live source asset here, only the event, there is no asset for this. Okay. If I record it in live source? Yeah, if you record it here as a secondary record, then schedule it, then it will get deleted. Otherwise, no. Then you can have a TPS where the uh, yeah. uh, yeah. 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 Main menu look like a tool. I can use a client. I'm sorry, sir. Back up here. I'm sorry. Hello. Yes, sir. Morning. Morning, sir. 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 Morning, Channel control, right? Then uh, we'll put the schedule. Then uh, when you want to put the live, search. Now this live is uh, configured with uh, hardwired wire. Oh, okay. So whatever signal it comes in, it just passes. Uh, so uh, always the next item which is uh, next to the live should be manual. Yeah, change it to manual so that even if it is crosses 15 minutes duration, uh, it, the live can continue. Right, right. The event which is after the live should always be in manual. Okay. So that if now the live event is 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If the news goes beyond 15 minutes, uh, it, it will be in manual mode. When the live PCR gives a handover to MCR, then they can take over. Mm -hmm. If it is finishing earlier that, then also they can go uh, take next and come back to that. Uh, Five minutes. Okay. 
uh, one thing here is the recording. Yes, on the live, you can see the uh, when you press, press this, you have a record enabled. Okay. Enable recording and record settings. Last time we tested the recorded, so we got some errors. So cannot today? Yeah, yeah, let's see. Just repeat the process. Actually, he is the uh, NCR guy. Repeat the process. <coughs> Okay. From, uh, from the... Yeah. His name is... Yeah. Ram was a student of me. Uh, he told me that uh, running, he get a smooth operation from the edit summit. So, but after that I was sick. It was not uh, smooth. So that's why I told him tomorrow Arvin will come so we can close the meeting. I took some schedules here. So this is uh, get a delay all those things. So I'll take this schedule. Wait, wait, wait a bit. This one. Okay. So I'll go to video clips. State getting ready, that is a later, that is uh, already agreed. We know that. Okay. So, that right now I can drag and drop yes. more. Yes, you can so drag and drop more. Order, yes, right? definitely you can work. This is not hampering your work. Okay. One, one thing you need to remember is, okay. like, now you created a schedule. <coughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll delete this everything, just to make you understand. And I start with the schedule. Okay. So, one schedule I'll start. Start time. I will make it uh, fixed. Okay, fixed. Then uh, set the time. Ten. Uh, uh, I make it as six. Morning six o'clock start. Then okay. I uh, go on adding the uh, my schedule. Okay. I have one uh, live event yeah, also. Yeah. I put my live event. Then again my uh, schedules. So one, this is you know, new. Still you can go and add the uh, item. Okay. This is the one. Okay. Then you, now you save this item. Uh, this is... I uh, save as and give it a 10th uh, February schedule. Okay. And uh, probably create, you, you create a 12 hours or 4, 24 hours. And save it. Now this has got 19 events into that. So add some more events into this. Then once it is one, you need to modify that. Modify, then it becomes, uh, say yes, it is 23 events. So during this time, like whenever it is even new, still you can perform the operations. I think this is doesn't have hampering anything. You can still modify it. Okay, this is still new here. Now what I am doing is I am loading this schedule onto the channel control. Okay, so I go to schedule, search, modify, and channel yeah, schedule. And I drag and drop it. Okay. So this uh, do you need to uh, uncheck this uh, fixed time? It is at a later place. If you want to uh, make it as an uh, uh, auto, then you can change it. <coughs> Definitely it is required. Before saving the schedule? Not before scheduling the schedule. Once you bring it here, then you make it as a uh, remove this auto. fixed and make it auto. Okay. Okay. Or else we can append schedule from here, right? If you append from here, then the schedule will not be used. It, it removes the schedule mm -hmm. and adds the events. Okay. In this case, what happens? 
if you are mo- modifying the schedule this is a on air schedule now mm-hmm. right now the same schedule you you are using it in the edit channel mm-hmm. suppose you delete this uh, event mm-hmm. right and you modify, modify this and it will change from there yes, also it will change this from the uh, on air schedule also now that okay. event got okay. deleted similarly if you add some more events into this or any changes you do this to the live channel even in the middle in the, in the middle, the middle of the thing okay say add you know this will get changed into this okay okay, okay. so during that time also doesn't transfer your yes, whether it this is here it shows as a new or a not ready ready doesn't make any difference so that updates the on a schedule immediately okay maybe uh, with this this keeping the new <coughs> new but still on the uh, this one channel control these are already updated so this has to turn for it so all this get updated in new so it's not a no problem even you can still this is new you can add the uh, one more uh, event whatever wherever you want in the page right you can add you can copy paste ಶೆಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ಶೆಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ಹೆಡರ್ and loads these 306 events as a append if you have got the net now see the auto schedule, file is gone auto oh, the fix file is fixed as gone now if you do any changes to the schedule here right nothing will happen, nothing will happen on the on it because it's not a schedule <coughs> only thing if you put as a schedule then it will be our schedule here in the beginning right this one the schedule and schedule name it is 10 february then if you delete this one complete schedule will get deleted right let's delete yes so that complete schedule got deleted and whatever i appended that remain as it came attached to the main yeah. now if i can edit from there it will not work here right? yeah now if you edit do anything here it won't do any uh, uh, changes to the me on your tv this is one and for the uh, live event okay uh, anyway <coughs> as a traveling uh, live you are putting a live event right uh, whatever the next event you always make it as a manual okay okay so that uh, even if it runs over the 15 minutes so uh, the live event enter is automatically <coughs> out, out is, is manual always it is manual. 
정도. 
put it into XRA, XRA transports it, transports it, then it puts into the watch folder of the So we have the watch folders here, the top boxes, IKX mm here, -hmm. top boxes, and the commercial killer program from here. Okay, so you can directly you can drop those files in this one, that is also possible, or you can directly put it into the XRA folder. Mm -hmm. So we have to map the this one or that one? Or both? Only this one. What's free? files and the letter will be there. Sorry, watch folder is to convert your old uh, files into standard files. Okay. Yeah, so this, this job is done by XR. Whereas after this, again, you have a delivery manager watch folder. Okay. Now you had earlier the inbox, right? Inbox you used to import everything like the uh, HD media, uh, standard generation, uh, or, or MPEG or the M MOV, MXF, whatever stuff you put it into the inbox. Now, that <coughs> job is given to the What's delivery good? manager. Okay, now delivery manager can also integrate with uh, the archive machines like Diva, Master, those things. Then it can fetch the data from the uh, third party uh, uh, system. archive systems also. That is why those uh, uh, required watch holders. Okay, then we need As to manually delete from here, from watch no, folder. Watch folder, only, only the XRE watch folder. Watch folder like that. Okay. No, Where, no. Uh, when it goes, XRE converts and drops it into the delivery manager watch folder. Okay. There, if it import is com, uh, successful, it, it gets automatically deleted. If the import is not successful, then it moves into failed folder. Uh, please, uh, no, 
there is not in that folder, watch folder, a lot of uh, files are inside there.